In this lesson, we're going to be talking about a heating curve. Maybe you've seen it in class before. You know the curve that your teacher has possibly showed you already that goes something like that. Well, in this lesson, we're going to talk about all of the details about it. We're also going to focus on why does the graph remain horizontal, whereas over here it increases. We'll talk about all of that in this lesson. Okay, so on a heating curve, you've got a y-axis and you've got an x-axis, okay? Your y-axis, let's actually make it nice and big. Let's do that. And let's do that. So your y-axis is going to be called temperature. Now remember what temperature is? Temperature is, um, you can think about it as how fast are the particles moving? We've spoken about that it's the kinetic energy or average kinetic energy. So you can think of it as how fast are the particles moving. So if the particles begin to move faster, then the temperature goes up. If the particles begin to move slower, the temperature goes down. If the particles keep the same speed, then the temperature remains constant. Okay, and then on the x-axis we have time. All right, and then I'm going to use Celsius, and then um, time, we can just say seconds or minutes, hours, whatever. Okay, um, and I'm going to use water for our heating curve. We're going to use water, okay? So let's start at solid ice. So that's going to be, let's start at minus 20 degrees, so at minus 20 degrees. Okay, so at minus 20 degrees, we are, water would be ice, so we are in the solid phase. In the solid phase, these particles over here are busy vibrating, so they are moving. So what's going to happen now is we are going to take this block of ice, okay? We're going to take that block of ice, and we are eventually going to try to take that ice all the way to become a gas. So we're definitely going to have to add in some type of heat. So let's go build a fire. So let's build a fire over here. So that's our fire. I think I'm rather going to do it here. Okay, so we'll build our fire down here. Okay, so that's our fire. That's our fire, which is like our source of heat, because we've got to go from we've got to go from the ice all the way to the gas. So you've got to heat it up, right? And that fire is going to add energy into that system. Now there are two types of things that are that are going to happen um, on this heating curve. So what do you think the fire is going to do to these molecules? Is it going to make them start vibrating more or is it going to start make the, will it start making will it start to make them vibrate less? What would what would fire do? Like that heat, would it make them move more or less? Well, it's going to make them start vibrating even more, okay? So the heat of the fire is going to make the molecules vibrate even more. So are they going to move faster or slower? They're going to move faster. So what's going to happen to the temperature of the molecules inside here? Well, they're going to start moving faster. And we said that temperature is a measure of how fast they move. So they're going to start going faster. And you see how we're going um, on the x-axis, we're going to the right-hand side. So we're increasing the time. And on the y-axis, our temperature is increasing. So maybe at five minutes, we are now at minus 10 degrees, okay? And then at 10 minutes, maybe we will reach um, another temperature, okay? So you see how the line is going upwards like that. Okay, so I'm not gonna put times at the mo anymore, but I just wanted you to see how it all works. Okay, so maybe, um, so the temperature is gonna keep increasing. So the temperature will keep increasing, increasing, increasing. And as we keep adding the heat of the fire, the molecules are gonna get faster. Eventually, they're going to reach a certain important part, and that will be at zero degrees Celsius. Because what do we know about liquid, or what do we know about water at zero degrees? Well, that is where it can go from a ice block into the liquid, or it can go from a liquid back to an ice block. This is where melting and freezing happen at zero degrees for water. So what happens is really, really interesting now. Everything was... Everything was normal for this part over here. We were using the fire to add heat into the system and the particles were starting to move faster and faster and faster. But when they get to zero degrees, something happens. 
what happens is the following. You know that in between these particles, we said in previous lessons that there are intermolecular forces that are trying to hold those particles together. They are like these attractive forces that are holding the pot. They're trying to hold those particles together, right? Now, when the water, when these, when these particles reach zero degrees, suddenly they start getting a little bit excited because they realize that they might actually be able to turn into a liquid. So in order for them to turn into a liquid, they are going to have to move away from each other. And to be able to move away from each other, they need to be able to overcome these attraction forces that are holding them together. So what the molecules do when they get to zero degrees is they decide, all of them, they decide and they start shouting at each other and they're like, hey bro, listen up, we're gonna have a bit of a change of our plan. We're gonna do something different now. Let's now take the energy that is coming in from the fire and let's not use that energy to move faster. Let's start using that energy to start getting rid of these forces that are holding us together. And so what happens is that the energy of the fire keeps burning, right? That energy keeps being added to the particles. But the particles decide that they're not going to try and move faster anymore like they were over here. And that's why we saw the temperature was increasing. They're rather going to try to use the energy now to start getting rid of these intermolecular forces that are holding them together. So that is what the energy of the fire is now going to be used for. And the molecules are not going to try and move faster and faster. They are actually not going to move. They're going to keep the same speed for this whole part. Um, while they are busy switching from a solid into a liquid. So for this part here, the line will actually become horizontal. Why? Because the temperature is not going to increase. So if the temperature was zero degrees here, then it will also be zero degrees here and zero degrees here. So the temperature is no longer going to increase when we are going from a solid into a uh, liquid. Here, we were solid. But now we're busy changing from a solid to a liquid. So remember what I said, we are going to use, the particles are going to use the energy from the fire to try get rid of these intermolecular forces that are holding them together. So the energy of the fire is not going to be used to make the particles move faster. And that's why the temperature is not increasing over here. Okay, so this part is where they are busy getting rid of all of those intermolecular forces. Over here, they were not doing that. Over here, they were just trying to move faster. That's all. Okay, so let's just put some letters here. A, B, and then C. So from A to B, the energy from the, um, the external energy supply, which could be like a fire or it could be anything, so the energy entering the system, I'll say it like that. From A to B, what is that energy being used for? It is being used, or well, that energy entering the system um, increases the kinetic energy of the molecules, makes them move faster. Okay, and that is where we saw the temperature going up like that. Now what happens at uh, from B to C? This is where we are starting the melting. This is melting, okay? So in this, in this part, um, the energy entering the system is now being used to overcome intermolecular forces, okay? It is not being used to increase kinetic energy, okay? Um, so the temperature remains constant. Temperature, because temperature sh tells us uh, the average kinetic energy. So the temperature remains 
constant. Okay, that's important, guys. Um, also, from A to B, what phase are we in? We are in the solid phase, when you're going from A to B. That's just solid phase. From B to C, now we are busy melting. When we get to point C, now we are completely, um, we are now in the liquid phase. Now in the liquid phase phase because this part here we were busy melting now at C we are now in the liquid phase okay so now we can get rid of this because now we are no longer in the um, whoops okay I'll put the fire back the fire is still there so now we are in the liquid phase let's go draw our liquid phase and we still have the fire and that fire is now going to be putting energy into these molecules Okay, so now that the molecules are, um, now that they're in the liquid phase, they're happy. They're not, they're not worried about, do we need to use the energy to try go into the solid phase? No, they're liquids now. So what happens now is the fire keeps burning, and all that that's going to do now is it's just going to, they're going to use that, the particles are going to use that energy to just start going faster and faster and faster. So their kinetic energy is going to increase, and so the temperature will increase. So now we're just going to go to the normal part that looks like this. And when does, when for water, when does it start boiling? Well, that would be at 100 degrees. So that's going to be our next place where things start getting interesting again. So here we reach 100 degrees. That's called D. So from C to D, we were in the liquid phase. Okay. And what happened now is that the, 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 the energy that was entering the system, energy entering is used to increase um, particle kinetic energy. And that's temperature, right? Okay, so that's what's happening between C and D. Now, all of a sudden, we reach 100 degrees, and suddenly these water molecules are like, guys, 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 just wait, just wait, just wait. Shh, stop talking, stop talking. Guys, we are at 100 degrees we now have the opportunity to become a gas. Do you want to do it? And all of them are like, yes, 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 let's become a gas. So the team leader, the captain says, okay, to become a gas, we need to be able to get rid of these forces that are holding us together right now. Because if we want to become a gas, we need to be able to move further apart. So you see that fire that's burning? Let's take the energy of that fire now and let's use that to help ourselves overcome these forces that are holding us together. And all of the molecules are like, okay, okay, let's do that, let's do that. So then you've got to understand, guys, what happens is that because the, 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 the energy of the fire, the molecules are now going to use that energy to try get rid of these forces that are holding them together. They're not going to use the energy to try and move faster anymore. So because they're not going to try and move faster, the temperature will remain constant from D to E. So from D to E, this is where we are boiling now. This is the boiling point. Okay, so the entering energy or the energy that is entering from the fire is being used to overcome the forces or the intermolecular forces. The energy is not being used to increase kinetic energy. And remember, kinetic energy is a measure of, um, or temperature is a measure of kinetic energy. So at that time, the temperature remains, I mean, the, the temperature remains constant. So we can say, um, therefore, temperature is constant. Okay? And so this is what happens during boiling. And you can go try this yourself. You can go, if you have a thermometer in your, in your house, um, like one of those ones where you can see the liquid mercury rising, you can go boil water on a stove. You'll see that the temperature will get to 100. Once it starts boiling, it won't go above 100. During the boiling process, it's not going to be going 100. Because what are the molecules doing in the boiling uh, when something's boiling? They are getting rid of all of these intermolecular forces so that they can move further apart. 
So that is what the energy is being used for. It's being used to get rid of those intermolecular forces so that they can move further apart. So from in the boiling from D to E, the molecules are not going to be moving faster and faster and faster. They are going to have the same speed, and that is why the temperature remains constant. Okay, now, when they get to point E, everyone's like, yes, we've done it. We are now gases. So at E, they are now gases. So then, if all of them are gases now, what would happen if we keep using the fire? Well, if we keep using the fire now, the temperature is just going to go up. They're just going to move faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. So from E to F, the entering energy or the energy that is entering is now used to increase the speed of the molecules. So that, that means, because they move, because the particles are going to move faster, uh, that means the temperature will increase. Temperature increases. Okay, and then another thing is that from E to F, we are in the gas phase. 